Section 8.1, confidence intervals for population proportions. So we're going to start off with proportions and then we'll go into mean land later. So we're in proportion land. So example one, what proportion of Chabot stat students have either written, have written a check? So I asked a class of 28 total students and six of them had said they had written a check. So the proportion would be six who had written a check out of the 28 total. And if you do six divided by 28, you should get 0.2143. That's a proportion about 21%, but we'll leave it in proportion form. So what is the chance that the proportion for this class is equal to the proportion for all stat students at Chabot? So what is the chance we get exactly 0.2143 for all Chabot students? And we learned last chapter that this is pretty much zero, but it's probably close. That's the whole idea of statistics. And so we're finally going to answer that question of how, cl how close. So we've been talking about things being close, but not exact. We're finally going to answer that question. So a couple vocab words and we'll get started. So a point estimate we've talked about before, uh, but it's a value of a statistic from a sample. Um, so that might be the mean X bar, the sample value, S or P hat for proportions. And we use these to estimate the parameter from a population. So we're trying to estimate mu, sigma, or P. But we usually only have a sample and we're estimating the population. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these samples and create this thing called a confidence interval. So a confidence interval estimates a parameter on an interval. So since we can't get the true value, the parameter is the true value exactly, and we just know we're close, we can create an interval to estimate that. So we're gonna estimate the true value on an interval based on statistics with a percentage that we call the confidence level. That states how confident we are that the interval contains the true value. So we'll see an example shortly. So before we can get started, we're gonna need that normal curve again. So back in 7.2, we learned that if we take a random sample of size n, from a two category population with a proportion, so this is specific to those two categories and proportions, then we learned p hat is approximately normally distributed as long as np and nq are greater than or equal to 10. And we learned that the mean is equal to p and the standard deviation is the square root of pq over n. So you can find this back in chapter seven. So chapter seven was all about when are we allowed to use that normal curve. Now we need to use that normal curve to create confidence intervals. So to derive a formula for a confidence interval, I'm going to start with expected range. We've done expected range a lot throughout the semester. So we're going to take that average, mu, and we're gonna add and subtract two standard deviations. And if you don't remember, this created an interval because it gave us two numbers. So this was maybe our first confidence interval before we even knew about confidence intervals. So I'm gonna think about this a little bit backwards now. What is the probability that the true proportion, P, is within this expected range from my sample? So you'll notice my endpoints are the expected range. We have the probability um, mu minus two sigma is less than P, which is less than the other endpoint, mu plus two sigma. And we learned that two standard deviations was about 95.45% from the empirical rule. And so this oddly tra translates into this new thing called a confidence interval. So we've already learned these numbers and these formulas. We're just gonna interpret, interpret it a little bit differently. So we are 95 
0.45% confident that the true proportion is within these two numbers. So mu minus two sigma and mu plus two sigma. So just a new interpretation of the expected range. So let's find a special formula just for proportions. So we're gonna take mu plus or minus two sigma, that's the formula we've been using all semester, and I'm gonna plug in the values for proportions. So mu is p plus or minus two times the square root of p q over n. There's one small problem. We don't know p or q because we don't know the population. So if we don't know p, what's a good value to use to estimate p? That would be p hat. So we'll just estimate with p hat and q hat. And that is my formula for a confidence interval. So let's check out an example. I think it makes a lot more sense when we do an example. So example two. We have a random sample of 583 adults. So I like that it says random. That means we probably have good data. 583 is the whole sample, so that'll be N. So we have 583 adults in California were surveyed and asked about their daily consumption of fruits and vegetables. So 234 of them um, said that they consume fruit two or more times per day. So that's kind of like my success, right? Consuming fruit two or more times per day. Versus not consuming fruit two or more times per day. So let's use the data to find a point estimate for the true proportion. So a point estimate for the proportion just means p hat of adults who consumed fruit two or more times per day. So we'll put the adults who consume fruit two or more times per day and then we divide by the total, which is 583. We also learned the formula where p hat was x over n, right? So 234 is my x, my number of successes out of n, which is the total. Or we could just think of it in words, right? 234 out of the 583 total. So let's see what we get. 234 out of 583, and we get 0.4014. I like four decimal places. So about 40% are consuming fruit two or more times per day. So what is the chance that the estimate from part A is exactly equal to the true proportion of all California adults? Right, exact is a really, really strong word. It's highly unlikely that we're exactly 40%. 0.14%, so basically zero, uh, unlikely to be exact, but should be close. And why is it not exact? And that's due to sampling error, in case we need that reminder. All right, so let's actually find a confidence interval. So I'm just gonna copy the formula from the previous page and then we'll get started. So the formula was p hat plus or minus two times p hat q hat over n, which was coming from expected range, but now we can just jump into this formula. So we want to find a 95.45% confidence interval for the true proportion of adults that consume fruit two or more times per day. So before we plug in, let's identify n, p hat, and q. So n was the total, which was 583. p hat was 0 0.4014. And then q hat is the same thing we've been doing, 1 minus p. So 1 minus 0 0.4014, and you should get 5986. You can check that. And so if we want to find a confidence interval, we'll plug in. The plus or minus is what's creating an interval. It's giving me a lower and an upper endpoint. 
So let's see how this works. So we'll do 0 0.4014 plus or minus 2 times square root 0 0.4014 times 0 0.5986 divided by 583. And now we just have to be careful on the calculator. So get your calculator out if you don't have it. Um, when I use the calculator, I usually like to do the plus or minus piece first. So we're going to do 0 0.4014 plus or minus, and we'll find um, the value on the calculator. So I'm going to type a 2. I notice students often forget the 2, maybe because it's outside the square root. And then we do second square root. If you have the same calculator as me, it's above the x squared. You have to hit second. And then... Yours might have parentheses, yours might not. I'm going to use parentheses just in case. So you can do 0 0.4014 times 0 0.5986 divided by 583. And you want to make sure all three of those numbers are inside the square root. So that'll either be parentheses or you'll notice the bar is covering everything. And then you'll hit enter. So you should get 0 0.0406. And just like expected range, we're going to add and subtract. So I always do subtraction first because the smaller number comes first. So 0 0.4014 minus 0 0.0406. We get 0.3608. I'm going to put it in parentheses with a comma. I'll show you the notation in a second. And then you can hit second enter and just change it to a plus sign. 0.442, and then I'm going to add a zero just so decimal places match. And that is our confidence interval. The notation is what we're going to do is we're going to put a P and we're going to put this little fancy E. Uh, that's basically saying P is in the interval in math notation. It's a short way of writing it. So P is in the interval of 0.3608. Point four to point four four two zero, and let's interpret. Right, interpreting is probably one of the most important things we need from this class. Numbers are pointless if we can't interpret them. So we're ninety five point four five percent confident that the true proportion of adults in California that consume fruit two or more times per day is somewhere between point three six zero eight, and if you want to make it easier to interpret, that would be thirty six point eight percent and 44.20%. So for math, I like to leave them in proportion form, but often in sentences, I like to switch them to, des to percents. It's just easier to understand. And this is just like an election poll. So if you pay attention to election polls now, you might notice um, it might say someone's polling at 51%, but then way down in the corner, you'll see maybe like a plus or minus three. This is usually hidden in like the small print, which really means they're not pulling, they're getting 51 in the sample, but due to sampling error, they might be above or below by three. So 51% could really be what? 48% um, to 54%. And so that's why sometimes the polls seem wrong because they don't match those numbers. But when you look at the interval, they're often still correct. So when you look at election polls, pay attention to that little plus or minus piece like hidden, usually in the small print. It's the same exact idea. Um, and so last thing is if 500 statisticians did a similar study, this is really, again, similar to election polls, right? Because election polls are repeated over and over and over. Um, and they all compute these 95.45% confidence intervals. How many of them would you expect to contain the true proportion? So unfortunately, stats is not 100% correct. Um, it's just what's most likely. Um, so if we're 95.45% confident, it really means we'll catch the true value that, meant, that percent of the time. So catch true value 95.45% of the time. So if you only look at one election poll, it, there's a small chance it could be wrong, but if you look at lots of election polls, then you start to see a pattern. And so if 500 people do this, that means 95.45% of the 500 
we'll catch the true value. So for percents, we go 0 0.9545 times 500, we get 477.25. Um, so we'll round that down to 477 intervals. So most of them, but not all of them. And again, that has to do with the fact that stats, again, is what's most likely. Stats is never proving the absolute truth.